ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Lamar and I am the chairman and Lottie is the timekeeper. The educator Mr. Brunker um, is Mr. Brunker. The topic of the debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Pembroke School. The negative team seated to my left is from Glenonga International High School. The speaking time for this debate is five minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time and a double bell will sound at the speaking time. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Trukmai Nguyen. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. We define the topic as that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, an annual long distance sled dog race run in early March from Anchorage to Nome in Alaska, should be abolished for all time. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe that this statement is true. Today, as first speaker, I will be talking to you about how these dogs suffer significant injuries and how many dogs suffer agonising deaths as a result of this race. Our second speaker will be talking about how profits, sponsorship and revenue all have decreased in recent years and how not only does the race not follow traditional mushing, but does not honour the early forms of mushing it was founded to pay homage to. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team's case. I am going to discuss two points. My first point is that dogs suffer significant injuries from participating in the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race. The Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is a sled race held annually where mushers and their dog teams of 12 to 16 compete against each other covering more than 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometres of jagged mountain ranges, frozen rivers, dense forests and desolate tundra through rough terrain and treacherous climbs. Leading up to this, dogs are put through intense, gruelling tra training where they are whipped for stopping, slowing down, going off trail or even relieving themselves. There have been countless re recounts of dogs being injured from these inhumane conditions. According to Dr Paula Kislak, President of the Association of Veterinarians for Animals Rights, training alone, without the additional stress of racing, results in significant, measurable gastrointestinal damage and serious gastrointestinal damage results from racing as little as 100 miles. This is further backed up by stories of sled dogs succumbing to stomach ulcers and other gastrointestinal damage, some even reported on the official Iditarod website itself. According to the Animal Welfare Institute, overdriving, overloading or overworking any animal is a crime punishable as a misdemeanor or a felony. According to statistics on the Iditarod website, Every year from 2002 to 2016, at least 42% of dogs did not finish the race. And according to a study published in the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine and data on the Iditarod website, out of the dogs that do finish, more than 80% finish with lung damage. Not only does the Iditarod trail sled dog race hurt dogs physically, but also immensely psychologically. I did, I did dogs are kept tethered on chains as short as four feet. Each dog is kept in one spot and cannot interact with other dogs. Experts on dog behaviour say keeping dogs in such conditions are as cruel as depriving a toddler of the same basic necessities. Now to my second point. Many dogs that participate in the race suffer agonising death. According to the Sled Dog Action <coughs> Coalition, at least 153 dogs have died by being run to death or from other causes in the Iditarod. However, this is not even considering the dogs that died during training, after the race, or the fact that dog deaths and causes are covered up and kept secret. Dog deaths are so common during the race that Rule 42 of the official Iditarod rules blithely acknowledges that some dog deaths may be considered unpreventable. Some dogs die of sled myopathy, literally being run to death. Other causes of death include aspiration pneumonia and acute blood loss, secondary to gastric ulceration, according to a study published in the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association of 2008. In 2013, Mark Dirk, journalist for Psychology Today, wrote about Dorado, a drop dog, 
who died in a snowdrift after being tethered and left behind at a checkpoint during the 2013 Iditarod race. Dorado and more than 100 other dropped dogs were left crammed in an abandoned hangar, with those that could not fit inside tethered outside in the open, some for more than four days in the freezing icy conditions. The deaths of Dorado and so many others were undeniably unnecessary. We cannot allow the suffering of these dogs to go on any longer. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we the affirmative team strongly believe that the Iditarod Trail sled dog race should be permanently cancelled as it is abusive and torturous to these dogs and causes significant injury and suffering as well as unnecessary agonising death. In this day and age, we cannot, in good conscience, allow this suffering to continue. Thank you. I call upon the first negative speaker, Prisha Chitty. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Chair, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the total for our debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. We, the negative team, are certain that this statement is false. We agree with the definition given by the affirmative team. Tonight, as first speaker, I'll be talking about the economic and job benefits of the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, as well as the Alaskan culture and culture associated with this historic competition. Our second speaker, the speaker's arguments will revolve around the social benefits of this race, along with the gender equality <coughs> that the race beholds. Her second argument that we will discuss that family cancelling the race is unnecessary, as it can improve and make necessary changes. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. To begin with, I would like to point out some flaws in the opposition's arguments. They said that many dogs lose their lives, hence the race should be cancelled. These dogs indeed lose their lives, however, by <coughs> Mush's, mistake, Mush's mistakes. Our whole team is arguing for the rules to be changed to save the dogs, and to, to save the dogs instead of killing the culture of the Alaskans. Now to my first argument, that there are countless economic benefits in this race. Cancelling it could result in an economic crisis. Alaska's economy is struggling. It's not doing so well. Its GDP has been declining for years. Cancelling the world popular Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race will inevitably cause a severe depression in Alaska's already struggling economy, affecting everything and everyone. Take Greyhound Racing, for example. Greyhound Racing contributed $144 million to the economy and communities of New South Wales during the 2009-10 financial year according to a leading economic consultancy firm. After the ban on greyhound racing, New South Wales saw 10,000 jobs lost and a downtrend in the economy. Alaska could be in the same situation. However, burdened, burdened, burdened with a much larger scale of unemployment, and their unemployment rate is already a whopping 7.9%. <coughs> During the Iditarod season, the tourism impact can be clearly seen. Jeanette Moores of the Anchorage Convention Bureau said that there is a dramatic jump in hotel room occupancy in the month of March and that the numbers grow every year. She also said that the fans come from all over the world. They, these fans eat in our restaurants, shop in our stores and visit our cultural events and performing arts. And it's not just two weeks where the tourism impact is substantial. There is traffic all year round. Therefore, it can be concluded that the Iditarod Road has a sizable effect on the economy as it helps produce jobs, aids the tourism industry and makes money 
which is later circulated throughout the entire economy. Now to my second point, the Alaskan culture that is associated with this race. In 1925, a deadly epidemic struck home. However, Dr. Curtis Welch realized that the only anti-toxin serum was 1,000 miles away. With the ferocious climate, they were threading, treading on thin ice. The only way to deliver the serum to the dying children and adults was by canine power. Shannon, also known as Wild Bill, tied the serum to his sled and gave the signal to go. The paws of his nine mile mulets pounded thunderously onto the trail of snow and they started the 674 mile Great Road of Mercy, a race against time. After enduring 127 hours in a temperature of 60 degrees lower than zero Fahrenheit, the serum was finally injected and the quarantine lifted. Courageously, 20 different mushes banded together in a daring relay, with four dogs dying from exposure, sacrificing their lives for thousands of, thousands of others to live. Three weeks after injecting the serum, the quarantine was lifted. Since 1973, the memory of the ceremony has lived on in the Iditarod sled dog race. Cancelling this race will not honour the courageousness that the mushes and the dogs underwent. Instead, the moshes' hard work and, de and determination to get the serum will be, be forgotten. <coughs> if we want Alaskan culture, Alaska's culture, <coughs> culture to remain, the Iditarod race cannot be cancelled. In conclusion, Ma Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in order for Alaska's economy to not descend into a crisis and to maintain the memory of the courageous serum run, the Iditarod Trail's dog sled race cannot be cancelled. Thank you. Second affirmative speaker, Thomas Tam. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chairman. The topic for tonight's debate is that the Aditya Trail Dog Sled Race should be permanently cancelled. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe this statement to be true. Our first speaker has already spoken about how the dogs involved in the Detroit are subjected to significant injuries and how many dogs will suffer agonising deaths as a result of this race. Tonight, I'll be addressing the following points, how profits, sponsorship and revenue all have decreased in recent years, and how not only does the race not follow traditional dog sledding, but does not honour the early forms of dog sledding it was, fa it was founded to pay homage to. The, oppo the opposing team has claimed that the Detroit Trail race is based on the gnome serum run, however this is simply false as I'll expand upon later. And the culture will not be lost in this race if it is cancelled, as it was never created to com commemorate this serum run. The opposing team has also tried to tell you that it would crash the economy, and I will once again elaborate on this point later. The, the Detroit do dog sled race was started in 1973 and spanned from Anchorage to Nome, a distance officially listed as 1.85 thousand kilometres. V. Reddington, a wife to one of the founding members of the race, Joe Reddington, clearly stressed in an interview that the Detroit race was to commemorate the role of mushes in early Alaska. The earlier role of mushes and their dog teams was to act as a form of transport and also to deliver supplies. Dog sledding in the early 1900s was when the most prominent form was the most prominent form of transport and took a very different form to that of the Detroit's. In the 1900s, dogs and their mushes formed what could be likened to relay teams switching dogs and mushes at certain points to reduce stress on the dogs. The notable dog sled event which the opposing team has already talked about, the 1925 serum run to Nome, involved 20 different mushes, each with their own team of dogs, running in a relay style to reduce the strain on their dogs. The whole mechanics of the Egyptian race is also different to that of traditional mushing, with the relay aspect to reduce stress on the dogs no longer being part of the race. 
The current Detroit race record is eight days and three hours. The serum rum to Nome, famous for its speed at delivering the, vi the vital antitoxin, involved, tw involved the 20 dog teams running an average of 197 kilometers a day, covering a total of 1,085 kilometers. The Detroit dog race has a single team of dogs running 1,850 kilometers in under nine days. That means that the same team of dogs have to run approximately 225 kilometers a single, every single day. At no point in dog sledding history has a single team of dogs been forced to run so far in such short an amount of time. The race no longer honors traditional dog sledding, it was founded to honor, and solely exists for human entertainment. This race doesn't honor nor convey aspects of Alaskan culture and subsequently should be permanently canceled for as our first speaker has spoken about, it's cruelty to dogs and the death it causes. Now, onto my second point. The Detroit race causes, requires $1.7 million to run annually, as stated by the Anchorage Daily News. Stan Hawley, the Detroit CEO, stated in an interview with Anchorage Daily News that the Detroit did not earn as much as anticipated and fell $49,000 short of their sponsorship goal. This statement was also made prior to the race's largest sponsor, Wells Fargo, withdrawing their support. This makes their financial situation even more dire and has taken yet another large portion of the race's funding away. To cope with the severe lack of funds, many cuts on the race were made, ranging from advertisement to supplies. In addition to those cuts, the prize money has also been reduced by $250,000, over one-third of last year's prize money. Stan Hooley said in a 2018 interview with the Anchorage Daily News that, quote, in a number of years we paid out more prize money than our overall earnings generated, unquote. <coughs> this statement by the CEO of the Detroit race clearly demonstrates that the Detroit does not add to the Alaskan economy, nor does it generate profits. The prize money for 2018 has fallen to an all-time low since 1999. Wade Mars, a musher who annually participates in the race, said that although the race's prize money may decrease, he cannot skimp on his expenses as his dogs still need to be fed and taken care of. He then went on to say that the less money he is winning in the race, the less financially worth it it is for him to run. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chairman, the Detroit dog sled race should be permanently <coughs> cancelled because it isn't contributing to the Alaskan economy, but is doing quite the opposite. The CEO himself stated that the Detroit has been paying more prize money than it generates. Not only this, the Detroit Trails race does not honor traditional dog sledding, the whole purpose of its creation. The Detroit does not make any revenue and no longer fulfills the purpose of its creation and therefore should be permanently cancelled. Thank you. On the second negative speaker, Saskia Vamar. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate. The topic for this debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. We, the negative team, are adamant that this statement is false. To begin, I'll point out some flaws in the opposing team's arguments. Firstly, the second affirmative speaker appealed to traditions by stating the traditional mushing routines and how the modern Iditaroid should be cancelled due to this very reason. Not only is this a fallacy, but deems this argument invalid. They also said that the profits of the Iditaroid race have decreased. This is false, as our first speaker has already discussed, but this event is about culture and society, and that, that in itself is enough to keep this race alive. Now to my points. My first point resonates around the social and community aspect of the Iditarod Sled Race. Going to the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is a community event for the people of Alaska and tourists who wish to engage with the sport. According to the Known Nugget, a local Iditarod newspaper, 95% of locals and tourists visiting Nome believe that the Alaskan Husky Race is, is the most important event for the town all year. Anchorage Daily News added, organisers expect at least 15,000 people and amid sunny weather fans line the starting tube for more than a mile. 
Thousands of people gathered to watch the race, and there were parties along the way, lots of flag-waving <coughs> kids, previously diving across snow berms, to get a high five from smiling mushers as they ran their 12 dog teams through the city. This humbling competition unites the community of Alaska. My point is that the Odisha Road race means so much to these people, and to take that away from them would be cruel, which is why we cannot let the Odisha Road race be permanently cancelled. Now to my second point. Unknown to many, the Odisha Road races are actually an event which promotes gender equality. According to the Raw newspaper, the Odisha Road Alaskan Husky Race is one of the only sports where men and women compete against each other and have a completely equal chance of winning. According to the conversation, sled dog racing was one of the first sports to have women in charge and competing against men. In addition to this, the Aditya Dog Race allows all ages to watch and enjoy the race. Due to Alaskan culture, everyone is brought up to experience the race, meaning that people of all ages can enjoy it. Considering all the change that is happening in the world to do with gender equality, the Aditya Dog Race is a prime example of modernisation and moving forward in a positive way. To cancel this race would be stepping in the wrong direction. To my third point, there are, many, there are many ways that the Odisha Road Sled Dog Race could be improved, which will, re, which will result in benefits for the entire community, rather than it being permanently cancelled. Anchorage Daily News suggested that creating more mandatory checkpoints will lower the amount of deaths and injuries. If there are so many possibilities for improvement, why should we cancel the Odisha Road Games permanently? Even the four-time Odisha Road champion, Jeff King, stated that the Odisha Road has already demonstrated over the years the ability to change, and I think this is a great time to evaluate how it could become better than it already is. One example of this is a measure that was recently added. According to Global News, it was the introduction of mobile phones while racing. The organisers agreed that this would help to limit the number of casualties. The dogs could be forced to stop for certain amounts of time to regain strength and limit the amounts of deaths, according to National <coughs> Geographic. Officials could be employed to monitor the race at all times, so in the instance that a dog is suffering, through technological communication, it could be helped. Anchorage Daily News also had some improvements to offer, which they said could rescue the race. These included expelling a musher from the race who is liable for the death of a dog, changing the requirements of a checkpoint to ensure that dogs are taken care of, and ending conflicts caused by between officials, mushers, and animal ethics groups. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in <coughs> conclusion, the Odisha Rod Trail Sled Race should not be permanently cancelled because of its strong community effect and promotion of gender equality. The race is incredibly important to the people in Alaska and does not have to be cancelled. There are plenty of ways of improving the race without cancelling it and ruining the culture of Alaska. Thank you. upon the third affirmative speaker, Dylan Warswick. Good evening ladies, gentlemen, timekeeper and chairman. The topic for our debate is that the Iditarod dog sled race should be permanently cancelled and we the affirmative <coughs> team undoubtedly believe that this statement is true. The opposition has stated that the Iditarod race has a positive impact on tourism. The opposition has provided little to no evidence uh, backing this claim up. Whilst the event may attract a few hundred tourists, there are other sources of tourism, such as cruise ships and tours. According to the Los Angeles Times, approximately 1.1 million of the 1.7 million visitors that came to Alaska came via cruise ships. Investing money spent on Idis Rod in more useful, humane activities will produce more throughput. According to Anchorage.net, one in ten people in Anchorage permanently work in tourism, equating to 19,200 people. Anchorage has a sufficient tourism industry, 
so the addition of a few tourists for a dog sled race would have a negligible impact on this industry. Cancelling the race would not dramatically impact Alaska or Anchorage tourism, and the money typically invested in the race could be better spent on ports and other investments. The opposition has also stated that the Iditarod sled race is an integral part of Alaskan heritage. This is false, as whilst Alaskans in pre-snowmobile times did use sled dogs for transportation, the notion of racing these dogs is entirely new. According to the Los Angeles Times, many of the pioneering Alaskans would likely be appalled to see the inhumane conditions dogs are currently being subjected to. Alaskans interviewed by Paul Fatick of the Anchorage Times at a race checkpoint expressed opposition to the Iditarod, stating that pioneering Alaskans would never run a dog 1,000 miles. Margaret Mespel knew Leonard Sepler, who the race commemorates, and told the Anchorage Times Sepler would turn over his grave if he knew what was happening. The race actually disrespects Alaskan heritage rather than ce celebrating it. True Alaskan heritage comprised of fishing, hunting, weaving, and other traditional activities. Running a team of dogs an absurd distance simply is not. To commemorate dog sledding, it is inappropriate to misuse dogs for a purpose they were never traditionally used for. Holding reasonable length race would honour the animals who have an integral part in Alaskan history, without killing at least one annually. The opposition also stated the Iditarod race commemorates the 1925 delivery of serum to Nome. This is false, as according to Vi Reddington, the wife of one of Iditarod's founders, originally we most certainly did not think of our race or the race trail in any connection whatsoever to the famous Nana to Rome serum run. We had no intention to connect the two. And according to the founder, Sapler was picked to represent mushers. The race was patted after the sweepstakes race, not the serum run. The opposition has stated that the race is a community event that brings Alaskans together. This is false as, whilst it may be a communal event, should people unite in the name of animal cruelty? Races such as the Costco 300, a 300 mile race, provide the same unity without exerting dogs and killing one at least once every year. The social bond can be promoted and preserved through shorter races without killing animals. It's simply unnecessary to race dogs such a long distance and kill 153 in the process. The opposition has also stated that the Iditarod promotes gender equality. This is false as there are many other better ways to promote gender equality. Having a few females in an inhumane dog race would not promote gender equality. The Alaskan government spends an exorbitant amount on the race. Injecting funds into meaningful gender equality campaigns will have a significantly more powerful effect on society. If the race were not to be cancelled, the additional funds could be invested into a far stronger and more impactful campaign. Our first speaker spoke about how the Iditarod race unnecessarily injures dogs. She noted the often gruelling, inhumane training that occurs and how it leads to significant medical impairments. She stated that training and the race is inhumane and how this has a profound physical and mental impact on the dogs. She also stated that Iditarod causes dog deaths. She noted that at least 153 dogs have died in the race and even now in recent times, dogs are often killed by the race's unpredictability. She discussed how dogs are overworked and suffer from sled dog myopathy where they are literally run to death. Our second speaker spoke about how the Iditarod has diverged from tradition. He discussed how dogs would traditionally run a maximum of 197 kilometres a day, even in an emergency situation. He noted that the act of running these dogs for mere entertainment is no longer truly honouring tradition. He also spoke about the profits from Iditarod and how they've decreased significantly, making it economically unviable. He discussed how Iditarod has fallen significantly short of its monetary targets and the withdrawal of sponsors has caused a reduction in prize money. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Iditarod race should certainly be cancelled. Jennifer Lee. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the topic for our debate is that the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race should be permanently cancelled. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be indisputably false. But before I summarise the negative case, I would like to address a few flaws from the opposition's arguments. The first affirmative speaker claimed that the race should be cancelled due to animal death. However, the Iditarod race officials agree completely with this and on June, of, uh, June 9th this year, the race officials announced that the Board of Alaska's most famous sled dog race will kick mushes out of the competition if their dog dies on the trail. Therefore, this argument is invalid. She also said that many dogs are dropped, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they're too weak to continue racing. According to the Rolling Stone, uh, a sprained wrist, poor appetite or female being in, in heat is enough for many mushers to withdraw their dogs from the race, also known as dropping them. Evidently, mushers don't get enough, enough recognition. They treat their dogs well and this is just misinterpreted by the media. She also mentioned that uh, it should be cancelled because of injuries. However, animals will suffer even more when the, uh, when the race is cancelled. How? Well, the RSPCA New South Wales Chief Ex uh, executive Steve Coleman said that the organisation did not get enough money to rehome the amount of greyhounds that were displaced after the greyhound ban. A large majority of these dogs were kept in awful, uh, awful conditions, got injuries, and were e even euthanised as there was not enough homes to rehome them. Uh, the London dog cart racing ban was also a similar incident. In the first year, 150,000 dogs were found dead in the Thames River because there was too many of them to rehome. Cancelling the race is an ineffective way of avoiding injury and animal cruelty. As, of, uh, as our second speaker has mentioned, we can simply modify the rules to ensure that these dogs are kept in safe conditions. The second speaker stated that the Iditarod race did, uh, did not originate from the serum rat. However, according to many websites, according, uh, such as the uh, official Iditarod website, uh, uh, it is to it has originated from the event, and he also said that it is not an effective way to commemorate the culture of the sled dogs that is saved Nome, as they're not using the same uh, same real life. However, this is appropriation, and we are just commemorating the event. It doesn't mean that we have to do this exact same thing as they have done before. He also mentioned that the Iditarod doesn't attract enough tourists and could do without them. They had no sufficient evidence for this and you can't prove that the tourists were, uh, weren't there for the race. Finally, he mentioned that the sled dogs are forced to run. Greyhound Articles Online says, there is a heritable and collective consciousness within species and breeds of animals. Some things are just etched upon their DNA. It's why huskies mush, and it's why greyhounds race. A greyhound who doesn't revel in the gifts of his own speed and grace. A greyhound who isn't inclined to compete with his littermates and packmates. Or a greyhound who doesn't choose to chase after game or laws. They're the anomalies. This can be applied to all uh, race, race dogs, demonstrating how sled dogs are not forced to run. Our first speaker, Prisha, discussed the, that the race acts as an economic stimulus for the otherwise depleting Alaskan economy. Stan Hawley, the executive director of the Iditarod Trail Committee, stated that in 1993, the most recent study, the race contributed $16 million that year alone. He predicts the numbers to be substantially higher now that the race's popularity has grown. Withdrawing the race, however, will cause tourism rates to plummet and put countless jobs like mushing and dog training in jeopardy. Alaska simply cannot afford this recession. Prish's second argument <coughs> emphasised the culture aspect of the race. Inspired by the sled dog race that saved the children of Nome, the race educates about dedication and teamwork and celebrates an important event in Alaska's history. Our second speaker, Saskia, considered the core of the competition, community. Thousands of people gather to support the town's biggest event, forming a social and positive environment. Secondly, Saskia emphasised that uh, the non-discriminatory nature of the race. The Outside Online magazine stated, Dog sled racing is one of the rare professional competitive sports that is truly co-ed. Uh, Bangor Daily News ad, mushing is age neutral. The winner in each race is the one who crosses the finish line first, whether male or female, young or old. It is all too common when media coverage, sponsorships and commer commercial investments in sports are determined by status. 
but the Iditarod gives equal uh, opportunities and thus has the opportunity to develop into a successful competition. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, remember that behind the finish lines are dedicated mushers who owed their livelihoods to the race. Crowds, community, and most importantly, dogs who have an innate love for running. And with all things, there will be issues here and there, but cancelling the race is not the answer. Uh, because running away from your problems is a race you will never win. Thank you.